is Rock and Roll Grad School with your hosts, Heidi Hedquist and Luke Poling. All their favorite songs are slow and sad. Hello, kitties. We are going to have a good time together because we are going to Los Angeles. Or do we have to say it like, Los Angeles, like that? Would that yes. help? New world. Exactly. We are talking with John Doe, uh-huh. he of X, but also solo musician and uh-huh. author and actor. Actor. An all round, like, poet. super cool human being. Right. And like we said after the interview, it was a little intimidating at first. It was, but he made us feel comfortable. I'm trying to remember now if I am putting this on him or not. Was he eating an apple by cutting off slices with a knife? No, but he was eating an apple and he did make it look cool. Yeah, however he did it was very, very cool looking. Yeah, he's way cooler than us. We don't know why he talked to us because he's way cooler than us. Uh, By far, by Mm -hmm. a lot. Um, Yeah, I'm going to have to see if I can go see them. Uh, Unfortunately, they're here next week and I've got to shoot. So perhaps the Psychedelic Furs X tour this summer. I know. I kind of want to go to both, like his solo one and the last yeah. one. It's, it's a fun record. It is. If the 1890s and people starving to death is fun. Well, it's, it's, it's thought-provoking. It is, yes. But it's got some good upbeat... It's definitely got some good hooks going. Jams. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's summer, it's Jam of the Summer, I think, is definitely on that album. Yes, somewhere. agreed. That's important. They said the Almighty would strike me down if I didn't tell the line. They say the Almighty will keep me safe if I keep His word with mine. But I'll be damned to hell if I take too much Because the Almighty is always just Alone and forsaken I feel like one of those questions that always comes up is, well, tell me about the people who played on the record and stuff like that. But you listen to this album, and I feel like the room and the atmosphere is such a part of these songs and the, and the mood in it. Where did you record this? Um, we recorded it at Jim Eno, the drummer of Spoon, mm-hmm. his studio called Public Hi-Fi here in Austin. And um, <clears throat> we recorded it the same way that it got it was created mm-hmm. with uh, Kevin, Kevin Smith, Conrad Chacroon, and I sitting in a circle, uh, maybe 10 feet away from each other. Uh, no headphones and just a bunch of mics scattered all over the place. Uh, skillfully placed. <laughs> yes. <not> Willy nilly. <laughs> <scattered. laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, and we, um, the uh, my compadre Dave Way, who I've worked with on probably ten records, uh, he helped produce it along with Steve Berlin from Los Lobos. And uh, he, Dave has worked a lot in uh, Sony Atmos, which is a, a new kind of surround sound uh, platform where you can, if you have a fancy studio, you can put, you know, nine to 12 speakers around you. And within the tracks, you can designate a percentage of each track to those speakers. So you actually sit like, feel like you're sitting in the middle of, of something. And, and I guess they have something does that in headphones as well the kind of binaural sense yes. thing yeah mm-hmm. but it's it's for real it's not just your kind of jive quadro sound or whatever that was 25 <laughs> right. 30 yeah. years ago um so yeah we just uh we we allowed ourselves to cut between takes because conrad has great time but you couldn't overdub a bad vocal note or a bad bass note because it was all there all the instruments were acoustic and they were all bleeding into into the other microphones sure. wow 
I hope we're not getting too technical, like no. straight off the bat here. Nope, nope, no, no, not this at is all. Perfect. We're we go. we're fans of the deep end. Yes, we do <laughs> like it, and our fans are fans of the deep end. So dive, you know what? dive that away. Would, that would be a great uh, byline for your for your. We're fans you of the. Wrong. We're fans of the deep end. That's brilliant. Huh? I'm, right, I'm we got to write reflecting. that one down. Yes. Yeah, no, that's perfect. <laughs> Amazing. Do you enjoy that kind of challenge of recording where it's we all got to get this right? Are you trying to get that perfect take or are you trying to get the mood of the room and what you evoke in that moment in that interplay between the yeah. the three of you? Um a, a bit of both, but there's nothing there's nothing perfect about this record. It's and a long time ago I started thinking of records as a record of what happened. Mhm. Mm um, so if you, um, much more of a big picture, uh, person like in everything, but certainly in music, I uh, started relying on intuition and, uh, just getting the message across, get, you know, telling a good story and, and, you know, trying to get it as right as possible, but there's bad notes in this record. Bad notes. I think bad notes add to it a little bit too, right? Well, yeah. That adds what, to the. Didn't didn't Thelonious Monk say there's no wrong notes? It just depends on what you play after it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Precisely. Well, and that intuition, as a, a, an incredible musician, I think so many people, no matter how successful or how talented they are, it takes them a long time to trust it. Yes. When did you know that your gut was right? Oh, uh, I don't, I, it, it's an ongoing process, but I think yeah. maybe, um, I don't know, four or five records ago, the first record I did with Yep Rock, which was um, Fables, I mean, um, uh, Forever Hasn't Happened Yet. Mm -hmm. That was when I, I felt like Dave, Way, and I found, uh, you know, the kind of sound that, uh, that was true to me. And I wasn't, I was seduced like a lot of people with, um, you know, indie rock and, and making weird chord formations so that the, it gave you a, it made your head tilt a little bit. And I still do that, but um, it's not quite as seduced by that indie rock sound. Um, and I embrace the Americana, the kind of um, honesty. And I do embrace that, like you said, the challenge of, of making it good, like, standing on the floor and doing live vocals and things doesn't mean that it's not terrifying <laughs> you know? yeah. mean that, but i, I kind of like i do like that challenge of like okay we've got a bunch of songs we're going to go in a studio and we're going to do this i i no, i've done it a little bit where you do things a piece at a time and uh, it, it's just not as rewarding yeah but but i allow for everyone to do whatever uh you know, not that I, anybody needs permission, but I, I think that you can make good records, you know, records that move you, that are important a, a million different ways, you know, mm -hmm. sending them through the mail or, you know, people recording individually and things like that. You, you can still make a good record. For sure. But I, I don't know. There's something about that all being together. Yeah. I love it. You just feel the energy vibing back and forth a little yeah, better was, than through the, the mail yeah. i mean that was one of the reasons that i would get some fancy guest singers on my other records it's like mm -hmm. who the hell doesn't want to hang out with debbie harry for a afternoon right so true. <laughs> you know, and i have and she said yes i made the offer and she said sure Just i mean send, you know but there's something about those records. I mean, like I think of it, it reminded me uh, a little bit of, I mean, all the recent Tom Waits records, but Mule Variations in particular, where you can hear mm -hmm. the sounds that are going on outside. And this album has right. that that room vibe where it's like you said, you're in the room. It's this recording of a moment and it just sort of adds an intimacy to the listener where you feel like you're almost eavesdropping in on this conversation mm -hmm. between the three of you with each other. And especially, and I know in the notes you were saying it's sort of a, it's connected to the pandemic and just the time and place in which these songs were written and recorded, but it just mm -hmm. sort of has an intimacy that I, I think 
you know, does not show up on albums when you are sending the tracks back and forth. I take that as a high compliment. And, and we made a concerted effort to keep the space to, to you know, uh, maybe a different or deeper understanding of less is more. Mm -hmm. we, we embraced that as we were, you know, arranging it. And, you know, if there was a, a certain figure that moving from one chord to another, I, I would say, Kevin, why don't you take that? I'll, I'll take the next one or, you know, so that we weren't just doubling up on everything because they're fairly mm -hmm. simple walk ups or, you know, little figures to do it. Um, and uh, I'd say it was influenced by, you know, I didn't do a academic research into what is or isn't folk music. It's just our version of folk music. You know, I've had a lot of it. I've had enough experience that I feel qualified to say, yeah, I, I know who Cisco Houston is. And I've listened to plenty of Richie Havens and, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. So it's good to see that there's young people that are doing it, too. There's a couple of uh, people I'm real fans of. Sonny War is one of them. And she mm -hmm. has this uh, guitar technique, kind of like Elizabeth Cotton. And uh, but it was also influenced by um, by Bob Dylan's record, um, John Wesley Harding, because mm -hmm. that's really simple. And it sort of takes you into this odd land that's you don't you can't really put a time on it. So, yeah. Well, and I mean, there's that Louis Armstrong quote that all music is folk music because all yeah. music is made by folks. Yes. For, so, for the folks. For, for the, the folks. folks. <laughs> yes. Yeah. In, in the process of, you know, I can't even count what number album this is for you between your solo records, the your work with X, does it get easier? Does it ever get less scary of that light comes on and you're going, oh my God, I hope we, I hope this sounds right. <laughs> what the hell am I doing? Uh, well, uh, yeah, everybody has imposter syndrome, but you just try to push it to the side <laughs> while you're doing it. And, and I think the key is to, find people and a place uh, where you you're not aware of the light being on of the mm -hmm. you know on air or recording now you have to that's you know that's part of the battle or or maybe part of being a professional or a, a you know seasoned a journeyman is you keep that under control you keep it or not or you just I don't know. You don't keep it under control. It's not like you tamp it down. You just sort of push it to the side. You just kind of, because the in songwriting or recording, the more open you are, the more that stuff can come through, come through you, get in there and then get come out. The better, the better it's going to be. Mm -hmm. The more it might relate to somebody. I, I don't know. Well, I think, yeah, that, make, that makes perfect sense. And that, that sort of vulnerability, I guess, um, mm -hmm. how, you know, you, you have to be so vulnerable as a creative artist, as a musician, as a performer, recording, or whatever, all the different. But so often, I think so many of us sort of, we, we save all of our vulnerability for that moment and don't necessarily translate it to the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. Is it something you take with you or... Do you leave that in the studio with the red light behind you? I can't remember who it was, but I was reading some statement where an artist was, it was a visual artist from years and years ago saying that working on the art is one thing, but just working on yourself, being an artist right. is really the work that you're doing. And that's that same thing of, of uh, being open and being, um, you know, letting letting stuff come through you. Uh, but I mean, people can do that even as a persona, you know, whether it's, True. you know, David Bowie or uh, Jeffrey Lee Pierce from the Gun Club, mm -hmm. they kind of invented themselves as these things. Right. Um, I'm not that smart or <laughs> devious or <laughs> whatever, whatever it, it is. Maybe. <laughs> uh, you know. Uh, and also, you know, this is really off the subject of music, but as a, um, 
as you get older, I think it's doubly important to open up rather than to close down. We've all seen our friends or family where they end up living in a single room Mm -hmm. and that's sad. You know, sometimes it's physical, but maybe the physicality followed something that was spiritual or mental, you know, and I'm, I'm not like a um, devout spiritualist or something, or someone who, you know, devo- devotes their life to spirituality, but I've definitely become more spiritual. That, that showed up in, in this record. For sure. And, um, you know, if you're, if you're expanding, you're not contracting and contracting seems like a, as you get older, it seems like a bummer. And it's total expanding, bummer. Yeah. But, but it's hard, you know, I mean, it's like things are scary. I'm, <laughs> I think a lot of people are fed up with l- another fucking learning curve on their phone. You're going to get a new <laughs> computer. It's like, oh, Jesus Christ, really? I got to do all that again? So true. You no, know? but that's, that's why all those, you know, millionaires get to go into work at Silicon Valley because they got to change shit and they got to update it and they got to do <laughs> they've got to give themselves a reason to go into work. Yep. Look okay. what I did. I made this whole new <laughs> platform. You got to learn. It's like, oh, fuck. I know. <laughs> change the questions as soon as we learn the answers. Yeah. Is that a reason you did this record and these songs so stripped down? As like, a, uh, I want to streamline this process and yeah, communication. Maybe. maybe it just appeals to me. I, I kind of had enough of um, playing with guitar players who played too much or or orchestrating many different things and it just seemed to i mean like i said the record was created on kevin smith's back porch or his patio and so that's all we had and we didn't want to do more we didn't have any amps or pa or anything so we just did that and had to listen to each other um and it all sounds very you know kumbaya and bullshit like that but it was kind of like that's what we had, so that's what we did, and sure. and tried to keep it have a, tried to maintain some sort of edge to it, you know, by the um, lyrics or the subject matter or the playing and stuff, you know. is not well, isn't soft. Yeah, and I, I I was as you were saying that I was thinking about the fact that yet the the structure and the body of the songs and the lyrics that it isn't a necessarily a layback you know no. put our feet up and mm-hmm. isn't life yeah. wonderful you right. know it 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 goes places and it it says stuff i mean that's always sort of been a hallmark of your work and what you're trying right. to do have you seen that kind of conversation change throughout the years uh I or maybe think, how has it changed yeah yeah I, well it it has in that um i mean x's records are pretty simple as well (laughs) um in in, if you think about other more conceptualized records um this is something of a concept record but it's not uh I, i tried to keep it from being pretentious um but what's the same is mostly the same is that is that most of the characters that are in X's songs uh, are in a moment of crisis or in a moment of, of change, you know, whether they had to leave Los Angeles or, you know, or Johnny hit and run Pauline or devil doll or motel room in my bed, or, you know, even the more kind of obtuse ones like uh, under the big black sun, you still get this idea of a, of a character who's, who's very sad, who's, who's having a hard time. Um, and the, I, I just sort of arbitrarily picked 1890 <clears throat> because it, it, well, I, I did, remove, I did uh, stay away from any modern references, but it's because that era is so elemental. It's not simpler. It's just like the bear can get you. Right. A real, a real bear. And will, right. yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and you can starve if you don't, you know, if your crops fail or, or you know, things like that. So. Uh, well, and, and to that point, so much of you know, your music through X on your own, through all of it, all these things we're talking about and these moments of crisis and these characters, 
the more things change, the more things do stay the same. And, and maybe it's a bear, you know, an actual mm-hmm. bear in 1890, right. and maybe it's another bear now, or maybe it's the same bear, because real bear, you know, who knows, but- Less fur. Less fur, mm-hmm. but it, they're, they're timeless in all of that. And I think that's interesting too, as I experience is, you know, my nieces and nephews growing up and becoming music fans and experiencing your music from then and now, and sort of it all feels, so relevant still and and so impactful Mm. to them no matter what and are you seeing that with fans as as new generations are coming forward and uh yeah i mean there's uh i think there's a lot of punk rock influence nowadays Mm. in in new music yeah um i'd give that uh organization girls rock camp a lot of Mm -hmm. credit for that you know how long ago did that start 20 years ago or maybe more yeah. And all those young girls that were eight and 10, they were just doing it for the, you know, for a few, it really stuck. And now right. they, they're 30 or in their mid twenties and they're fucking rocking out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I can't think what I was. Oh, well, once the record was done, I sent it to, to my family or, you know, mostly done. <laughs> and my one of my daughters said, um, "God, there's so much loneliness and and isolation in this. It's just like what we've been going through." And <laughs> I'm such an I'm such an idiot. I'm so inside of the thing. <laughs> I had to hear, have her say that to realize, oh, huh? <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> what, do you, what do you know? I'm relevant without even thinking about it. Um, but that was a that was a good um, observation, and a nice, uh, a, a great coincidence that I felt. Oh well, people might be able to relate to this because of that. For sure. Yeah. Have you? First, sorry, go ahead. No, go go. I was gonna say, have you played these live with some of your other songs? Do they all play nicely together, or are they? Yeah. Well, I I the choose arc? the. You know, we. That's the other thing we were before. There were all just new songs. We didn't. We just played songs, you know, and we tried some X songs and, you know, I, I can pull off a handful of X songs just with an acoustic guitar. Mm-hmm. A lot of them, sometimes people will request and I think they're insane because it would sound <laughs> terrible. And I've even tried it, you know, but things like The Hungry Wolf or Los Angeles or, you know, it's like, no, it's, it's going to ruin the song. But uh, yeah, we do some cover songs and other uh solo stuff and they do it, it does uh yeah it all holds together that's excellent where, and and where are you guys remind me i'm in detroit detroit and i'm outside of philadelphia well i am playing in philadelphia so <gasps> i've heard uh and i think i'm i'm playing in ann arbor okay ann arbor works yeah at the <laughs> Arc, right? Yeah, Isn't I it? love the yeah. Arc. Yes, I yes, I will be there for sure. The Arc's a coming great coming up in place. coming up in June. <gasps> oh, and I think we'll yeah, be there. I think you're at the City Winery, I believe. In Philly, awesome. yeah. In Philly, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. Indeed. Oh, we'll be there, and we won't ask you to play things that don't translate. Well, we might yeah. ask you to. We but still we'll, might. Yeah. We still might. <laughs> well, you know, I when mean, you no, have obviously. when you have a when you have a bunch of songs, you can kind of filter through, you know, pick through them and yes. find some ones that work. You know, we always want, in Detroit, we always want songs about Detroit. So we'll be, uh, oh, well, I do <laughs> play the new world. And Perfect. <laughs> I and figured I think, that one would translate. Be, uh, so. <laughs> yeah. And, and X is going to be in Detroit with the psychedelic furs. Nice. Oh. Very yeah. nice. That's yeah, we played happened. some shows with them uh, a few years ago and it really worked. And so now we're doing a big, like six week tour with them. Perfect. Oh, I get a double double win. I love yes. it. Yeah. They made a, the, they made a great record. The Psych Furs in twenty twenty. Yeah. I don't think I've heard it. I'm embarrassed to say I haven't heard it. Well, it was during pandemic, so there wasn't as much um, you know, coverage. I have to go take that but out. It's called Made it's called Made of Rain. It's so nice. good. Oh so good. Do you like the kind of back and forth of doing the trio stuff and then doing the X stuff, or do you prefer to keep the uh, church and state separate? (laughs) 
I don't have a choice. Yeah, you well, <laughs> yeah. um, I, I, you know, I'll have a few days off, and I just kind of, Freak? you know, <laughs> redirect your attention, and you know. Yeah. Uh, but X, I mean, X is exciting. Run around, you know, jump around on stage a little bit, and you know, but we we give it our all, so it, it never gets uh, phoned in. Mm. Um, it, it may be a, it, it's a little um, schizophrenic at times. Um, I was writing some of these songs the same time that we were writing the X record uh, in 2019, so that was a little like move. But, yeah, that. Yeah. Did you ever? I mean, obviously, so so different. But did you ever feel like, oh, wait, I would have liked to have done this a little bit more for this one? Did you ever have to pick between <laughs> no. your children? No, they, no, they were they were very very different, very um, very different. I'm and, sure. And for the X record, I relied on um, a lot of Xene's lyrics to to write those songs. Uh, um, maybe the next one, the next X record, I'll use more of my own but <clears throat> you know we ended up writing a lot of those together the x band um where i would have some uh you know chords for a certain part of a song and if it didn't work then you know billy might say well do we need all of those chords you know maybe we can just use two of them instead of four or five right and, and that that was uh that was different for us mm-hmm. uh, another kind of opening up yeah that's right deal. back to that <clears throat> but um yeah it's i i feel like there is a certain amount you have a certain amount of creativity and you can just focus it towards one thing or another you know and, and i try not i've just recently said no to things because i couldn't focus refocus on stuff are you and, still uh, doing any acting or do you done with that a little bit uh yeah i actually did a movie back in 2019 it's a remake of the 1949 movie doa Mm -hmm. that Mm. uh edmund o'brien was the lead in and we did it in a period uh down in saint augustine florida Mm -hmm. there's lots of spanish moss and gothic scariness and i got to be the guy i got to be the, the dude and uh and we're trying to find a we're sending it to film festivals and trying to find a distributor and all that crap awesome. they're doing a sound mix of it pretty soon and yeah looks that's good awesome. looks good that's i didn't awesome. i didn't suck <laughs> I'm, I'm a bad i'm a i'm a bad um judge of of my acting stuff but it was really uh exciting to do it that's yeah awesome. and that's such a different way to express yourself in some right. form i yeah. mean in other way ways more, way more internal mm-hmm. yeah and and you're sure. you're you you the reward you don't have to have the audience clap for you you, you just right. kind of know it you know whether you were in the scene and it all was happening and it felt real or not if the director says good job that's that's a bonus but you kind of know so many people rushing by Fables in a Foreign Land, the new album by John Doe, is available right now wherever you get your music. For more information, check out his website, thejohndoe.com. He is also on Twitter, where he is at John Doe from X, and on Facebook, where he is at The John Doe. You can check us out on all the various socials. Be sure to visit our website at rockandrollgradschool.com, and don't forget to leave us a review. Today's show is produced by myself and Heidi Hegquist. Our reluctant producers are John Sauvé and Sandy Stone. Our willing producers are Rachel Allen and Randy Jeanette. Our intern is Zach Jackson. This one's for Philippe. Thank you, good night, and may all your favorite bands stay together. To the darkening of light, all the memory of that night, I'm never coming back. On your face